Centurion. This is Waco PD on the beat. Whether it's crime or just getting to know the Waco Police Department, we're here to talk about things that matter most to you. Well, hello, Waco. Welcome to Waco PD on the beat. I'm Sierra Shipley, the public information officer for the Waco Police Department. And I'm Officer A.J. Smith, the Crime Stoppers Coordinator for McLennan County. Yeah, and uh, we're here, you know, to, this is usually when we talk about crime stats yes. for our, our podcast month, but we've got something a lot bigger Yeah, so to typically talk about. we talk about statistics because of things that have happened. So today we've got somebody here. You may recognize her from a, Hello, our first everybody. episode. <laughs> so uh, my partner, Officer Martinez, is a crime prevention specialist. So we're going to talk about preventing some of those statistics this Black Friday shopping season. That's right. Black Friday has begun. Wow. Thanksgiving just happened. We hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. And it's time to get our presents and gifts done. Yes. I've finished all my shopping. Oh, no. I'm my a procrastinator. Presents. I shop <laughs> Just on. kidding. I haven't I started. I shopping <laughs> on Christmas Eve. <laughs> my presence is everyone's present, so you're oh, welcome. Oh, there you Not go. Not to well, ruin thank the you. gift. Yeah, that was kind of, I wish you would have waited until, you know, Christmas Day or something. So moving on. <laughs> <laughs> moving on, yes. <laughs> so um, a lot of stuff. A, a lot of increases in, in, a certain cr- in certain crimes happen around this time of year. Um, Sophie, explain just some of the things. Things that, in general, what we might be seeing a little bit more of. Well, it's an exciting time of year. And then with last year being, you know, how everything was shut down, uh, this year everybody's out and about, excited. Um, when folks go shopping, you know, we get tunnel vision because we are so occupied with, you know, what we're going to get our loved ones. And so a lot of times we get so focused on that that we don't, you know, look around and see what's around us, what's going on, and don't catch the criminal element targeting us that are not paying attention. So that's one of the big things during the holidays is paying attention, being aware of your surroundings, uh, just taking that small amount of time. Uh, all it takes is a few seconds for somebody to take your purse from the shopping cart, you know, or while you're loading your stuff, uh, again, taking your purse or uh, following you outside because they're looking for those people that are not paying attention. Right. So that's one of the big things is being vigilant. Yeah. Well, especially this time of year. I mean, those criminals know that people are going out shopping. Yes. They, they know that obviously if we're going out shopping, we have the money, money. and the credit cards and stuff. So, yeah. yes. So uh, there's so many things. Um, so let's go with shopping. Yeah. Let's start with shopping. So, you know, when we go shopping, we want to kind of, Stop for a minute and make a plan, you know, on that particular day you, you're going shopping. Are you going to go shopping for everybody or just for a few folks and say, OK, today I'm going to go shopping for this and just try and keep it to that. And then again, the time of day you go, try and go during daylight hours, try not to stay, you know, after the sun has gone down. But if that happens, again, plan ahead and try and park where it's well lit and uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. So anyway, we want to prepare. How much money are we going to take? Do we have to take all our credit cards? You know, do we have to take all 20 of them? Or do we just need one or two? Um, do we have all those credit card numbers recorded in case our wallet gets picked or something? So we want to prepare for that. Also, too, where are we going to go? Um, is somebody going with us? You know, usually it's a lot funner when you go with other people and all um you know, we want to try and not have to go by ourselves, especially if it's going to be, again, you're going to go after the sun goes down. Uh, it's better to have another person with you. So anyway, so we leave and uh, we go to the store. We want to park in a well-lit area. Uh, again, watching for our surroundings because there may be folks in the parking lot trying to sell you something, trying to uh, tug at your heartstrings, asking you for money. Uh, don't stop. Keep going. Go you know, your goal is to go shopping, go in there. If there's a security guard, if there's an officer or somebody there at the store, tell them, hey, there's somebody out there trying to sell us stuff or there's somebody out there begging for money or whatever so that they're aware of what's going on. Uh, so once you go in there, uh, get your shopping card, you're out shopping and everything, uh, look around you. You know, I mean, again, you, we get focused on what we're going to get our, our loved ones for Christmas, but take the time to look around you. Uh, be aware if you ladies if you're carrying a purse uh, and then going back to that do you necessarily have to take your whole purse can you just take a small wallet so that's just something less that 
you need to, you know, think about. So look around you. You know, is there anybody that, you know, maybe may be following you? Are you getting a bad vibe from somebody? Uh, are you seeing the same person at every aisle, but they don't seem to be shopping? Mm-hmm. You know, they're just kind of lingering around and you get that funny feeling, the little hair on the back of your neck stands up. So it's like, if you're starting to feel that, if you're starting to feel like maybe somebody is, you know, following you, again, is there security? Go let them know. If there is an, an officer, uh, let them know. Or just go up to an employee, you know, particularly a manager, and say, hey, look, there's this person. Everywhere I go, they are, and they don't seem to be shopping. They just seem to be lingering around, and I'm not comfortable. Uh, so we want to, again, be aware of that. Your kids, Oh, that's a big oh. one. So <laughs> I know. It's so, it's so hard to go shopping with kids, right? I we, know. we want them to come, but at the same time, we'd love for them to stay home. Yes, yes. Crime Stoppers is an organization which bridges the gap between law enforcement and the community so together we can solve crimes in our neighborhoods. Crime Stoppers encourages the community to assist in the fight against crime by overcoming the two key elements which inhibit community involvement, fear and apathy. Crime Stoppers allow citizens to anonymously submit tips. Tips can get you up to a $2,000 reward if it leads to an arrest or solves a crime. Tips can be submitted by calling 254-753-HELP, which is 4357, visiting wacocrimestoppers.org, or downloading the P3 app. Remember, tip submission is always anonymous and can lead to a reward of up to $2,000. We, we had to take our daughter because we had no family here. So what we do, you know, we take her to the toy aisle and she'd be like, oh, this and that. She'd pick her toys and then... I'd take her somewhere else, and then my husband would come around and get the toys she liked, <laughs> go pay for them, stick them in the trunk, and then but she never knew. She just That's found good. out this That's year. That's a good trick. She She's just 20 out. years old. She found out this year <laughs> how we did it. Yeah, I know. That is We're good. Really good. Some notes for, <laughs> for when it's your turn. Exactly. Uh, so, again, if you can find somebody to watch your kids, you know, a trusted person, that'd probably be best. Because, again, that's just something else that you have to pay attention to. And, I mean... When you go shopping, there's a lot of people shopping. And again, your criminal element is in there for whatever their their goal is, whether it's to, to steal something from you or whether to target children. Children want to go see toys, you know. So we want to, again, if we have to take our kids, talk to them, say, hey, look, don't leave my side. Stay with me. Stay where I can see you. I always made my daughter walk in front of me, in front of the cart, so I could see her. Um, you know, uh, and let them know if you get lost, Okay, you know, go if there's a police officer, go to the police officer or go to the register and tell them, you know, that you can't find your mom or dad, whoever you're with and all. But also teach your kids your name, because a lot of times you ask kids, you know, what's your mom and dad's name? Mom, dad, (laughs) you know, or, you know, do they know your phone number Mm -hmm. and all so that that way, you know, they can get on the intercom and they can, you know, call you out and come to the register or if they want to call you by phone. Uh, but again, we want to prepare our kids as well. So it's a lot, I know. Yeah. Well, I think it's important too, and, and you touched on this, you've said it before, is when you are explaining maybe a plan to your kids if they do get lost, don't leave the store, right? Right, right. Do not leave the store. Uh, say if you get lost, don't walk out of the store. Don't let anybody walk you outside the store. Go to the register. Uh, that's probably the best place you can go. Go to the register, any register where there's a cashier. Say, I lost my mom, I lost my dad. They're out there somewhere. You know, right, the, right, and go straight up to the associate at the register. Don't yeah. wait in line. <laughs> no, don't wait in line. Just, just go straight up and say, "I lost my mom. I lost my dad." Mm-hmm. Because then the store will implement their their protocol where they lock the doors and, you know, they send out a code and the whole bit. Uh, yeah, we lost, I think, my niece at Kohl's, and they shut everything down wow. until That's we awesome. found her, and they code blue and the whole bit. It was pretty cool. I remember I got separated from my mom in Walmart, and they did not do that. So. Gosh, that's I, cool to hear. Yes. Gosh, I, and, and you know what? Even now to this day, I, when when I go shopping with my mom, and I'll turn around and she's not in the aisle, mm-hmm. and then I'll walk a few aisles and I can't see her, I still get paranoid. <laughs> I'm like, where's my mom? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and and kiddos, you know, if somebody comes up to you and tells you, hey, you know, uh, you like a toy, I'll buy it for you. You know, all you got to do is go with me, or you know, hey, I got some puppies out in the parking lot, or they try and get you to go with them. It start screaming, stranger. Start screaming, danger, start running to the registers. Uh, and that's what we want to, you know, get our kids on. And, you know, that's going to draw attention. So that kind of going back to what you're saying about paying attention to your surroundings. Mm-hmm. If everyone's paying attention to what's going on around them, 
the chances of somebody picking up on that are way better. And, you know, if right. I'm looking out for you and you're looking out for me and we're both looking out for her, like we're going to mitigate as much as we can. Right. People getting their stuff taken or. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't, it doesn't guarantee it 100 percent, but it drastically minimizes those chances because your criminal element is seeing that you're paying attention. You're making that eye contact. And, you know, that's another thing. You feel somebody's following you or whatever. Make eye contact. Yeah. You know, look at them. Mm -hmm. it's like, can I help you? And a lot of times that kind of spooks them, yeah. you know, and they go, but at the same time, still, still report it because they Absolutely. may go and find another target. Yeah. Because just because you kind of made that dominant move to like make eye contact, intimidate them out of whatever nefarious things they're thinking about, mm -hmm. somebody else may not have the, the confidence to make that eye contact right. and be a victim. So you're just, just looking out for your fellow yeah. person there. And just as, I mean, as you're walking in the parking lot, walking into the store and stuff, just making eye contact with people because you just don't know who that criminal element is. They're looking, they're, they're seeing who their, their vulnerable target's going to be. But as you're walking around, you know, I try to make eye contact with people and, you know, I kind of nod, say hello, but I'm, it's also a message. I know you're here. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you look I'm like. I'm looking at you. Yeah. I see you. Yeah. <laughs> so you're letting them know I'm paying attention to what's going on around me. So. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So moving on, you go to pay. Uh, if you carry cash, try not to flash your cash, you know, just get what you need to pay for your items. Uh, if you still use checks, again, you know, try not to, uh, uh, have your checkbook to where somebody can take a screenshot of your checking account number, your routing number and your information like address. Uh, also to credit cards, like I said, minimize what you're going to take, only take what you need. And, uh, again, you know, try not to disclose that account number because, you know, we got some smart criminals out there. And all they have to do is take a screenshot and they'll figure it out from there. Yeah. So so we got to be mindful of that. So now we're moving on and uh, we are uh, we're headed out the store. OK, so Sierra, when you're walking out the store, do you have your keys in your hand when you're walking? out? I got my keys in my hand and each individual key through my fingers. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> just making sure. That is Knuckles great. aren't illegal anymore. So like, well, I, just totally in fine. case I need to be like, wow. Right. <laughs> right. It, it's a tool for you that yeah. you may need in case you're attacked. But again, uh you know, sometimes with ladies, and we carry those purses, mm -hmm. and uh, we're fishing for our keys, and there's a black hole that exists in, in purses. doesn't matter how big or small, mm -hmm. but whenever you're looking for whatever you need, you can't find it. That hole kind of just, like, hides it from you, and then you find it later when you don't need it. So we want to be prepared. We want to have those keys in our hand, that key fob that's going to unlock our car. And, again, we're walking out. We're paying attention. If you have too much, that you shop too much, and you have a lot of stuff— you know, ask to see if somebody can walk you out. Again, security guard, police officer is there, or just, you know, one of the employees that's mm -hmm. working there. Hey, can you help, can you walk out with me? Because I got a lot of stuff. Because, again, a second pair of eyes is better than one. Mm -hmm. So we're walking out to our car. We see our car. We want to start observing our car. Is there anything suspicious going around? Is there a big truck blocking my car? I can't see it. So do we want to kind of make a, a wide turn just to, you know, see if, Nothing fishy is going on. As we get to our car, we're going to pop our trunk if we have uh, our remote. Now, I see this a lot. You know, especially ladies, they bring up their shopping carts and they start unloading everything in their trunk. Guess what's the last thing they unload? Their purse. Their purse. And I've stopped before. I'm like, uh, ma'am, hi, I'm a wake up police officer. And, you know, I just wanted to offer you, you know, some advice. You may want to put your purse in your trunk before you unload because somebody may pass by and take your purse and for the most part you know they're they're thankful for that but i just cringe when i see it that's the first thing i always put in the car is yes. the purse yes you know and, and you know even the kiddos you know you know just put them in the car just to have them in the car put your purse in there you know and then start unloading your stuff mm -hmm. and then again at the same time as you're unloading look around you if you're by yourself when you unlock your car Hit that remote just one time so only your driver's side door unlocks, not all the doors. And then once you get in, uh, you know, don't check your text messages or get distracted or anything else. Start the car, put your seatbelt on, and get going. Mm -hmm. And then as you're driving, pay attention. Is anybody following you? If you feel somebody is following you, get on to 911. Say, hey, look, I think I'm being followed. Go to the most popular area you can find. Uh, I know one time there was a situation and a lady was being followed and she literally came up to the police department. Smart. And the guy got stopped <laughs> and everything and uh, it was really cool. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, go to fire department, you know, go to the police department, any populated area uh, to get some help. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, what happens now? So we've got our gifts. We put them in the car. And now all of our presents are home. Yes. And we've wrapped them. Maybe we've gotten some presents ourselves. Mm -hmm. We've hung up that beautiful 60-inch TV, 80-inch TV. And now that big box is outside. Yes. So we don't want to do that. Don't do that. No. It's like yeah. advertisement for criminals. Yay. Hey, look at the plethora of goodies that we've got here. Yeah, we got a Christmas gift for you. Like look through the trash <laughs> right. and figure exactly. out which house they want to break into. <laughs> exactly. So again, we want to take the time either in our backyard or in our garage, cut those boxes up and stick them in your recycle bin and in your trash can. Don't ever advertise what you have gotten for the holidays because they're looking. They're looking. And a lot of things I see, a lot of people want to display their Christmas tree, you know, in that big beautiful bay window and people admire the tree and the pretty decorations but your criminal element they're looking beyond the tree they want to kind of see what your house how it's laid out what do you have do you have a bunch of gifts around the tree and all so we, you know we want to try and kind of minimize that we don't want to attract the the wrong kind of attention do you want to help solve crime in your neighborhood well the neighborhood camera initiative is something you might want to sign up for Ring doorbells, nest cameras, and all the other camera security systems installed on homes and businesses that are facing public areas are tools that could help our officers solve very important crimes. By signing up your camera or cameras in the Neighborhood Camera Initiative, it allows our officers' knowledge to where these cameras are, and if a crime had happened, it could have possibly saw the incident in question. You can sign up your camera on the City of Waco website at wacopolice.com. Right. That, I've never even thought about that is, oh, I always look at how pretty the tree is. Yes. But as a criminal, you don't think about looking what's underneath the tree. Yeah. So can we cover wow. when we're going on, if we're going on vacation? Mm -hmm. so, so we're going out of town for the holidays to visit family, exciting times and everything. So again, make a plan. So Waco PD, we have a vacation house check. All you have to do is uh, call 750-1761. And you're like, hey, we're going to go on vacation. We want to put our house uh, on the list for a vacation house check. Our citizens on patrol are the ones that go and do the checks. But we have a series of questions to ask you, so why, that's why it's important for to call in advance. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we ask, do you have dogs? Is somebody going to come check the house? Uh, you know, how many cars in the house? Just all these things so that when our COPs go by, you know, they want to make sure everything looks as, you know, you said it was. So if they see anything out of the ordinary, what they're going to do is they're going to contact dispatch and say, hey, look, we're doing a vacation house check. Something looks off at this house. Uh, it's, you know, it looks like a door's open or what have you. They'll send patrol out there to investigate to see if there's been a burglary. So, and they'll have contact information to call you if something mm -hmm. does occur. Yeah. Uh, but go ahead. No, I was going to say that's the house checks are great. Is there something that people need to do? Do they need to call a certain day in advance or is that something that can just happen right away? Preferably the sooner the better. So that way we can put it on there and we can get it out to our citizens on patrol. Hey, we got some vacation house check, mm -hmm. house, che house checks for you. And uh, so that way they'll come in and they'll know. Uh, so we can we can plan. Um, so what else? Let me see. Uh, again, uh, automatic timers, you know, just to show that maybe somebody's in the house. Uh, if you have a trusted friend or family member that can house it, that's even better. Uh, because it shows that somebody's in the house, cars are moving in and out. Uh, if you still get the newspaper, you may want to stop that while you're on vacation. Your mail, either have somebody pick it up or tell the post office, hey, can you hold it? Because those are just telltale signs somebody's not home. Right. Yeah. So uh, the grass doesn't grow as fast during the holidays, but, you know, if you can cut it prior to leaving, so that way, you know, uh, it takes longer for it to grow and it mm -hmm. just doesn't look unkept like nobody's there. Absolutely. And something that my dad used to always do as a kid, it drove me nuts because it's like, I want to go to grandma and grandpa's. Well, he's got to go through the house and every lamp that he could, he put a light timer on. Mm -hmm. So they're all coming on and off at different times yes. throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Smart. And it just, even if you've got nobody that can come to the house, it looks like somebody's there because there's lights on and off at random yes. times. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the great thing about it now, we have our ring cameras that yeah. we can, you know, we can be in three states down the road and we can still see what's going right. on at our house. So that's right. pretty neat. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but one big thing, don't hide your keys under the mat, under the flower pot. But it's such a good hiding spot, Or right? in those little, no. little uh, 
plastic rocks. Mm, yes. Your criminal element knows about all these hiding <laughs> spots. Especially if you don't have a single rock in your front yard. That was one thing that always cracked me up. I'd go to somebody's house and it's like, you have grass, you have no rocks. Except, Except for that one fake one right really there. Really cool fake rock. Yeah. yeah. There yeah. can't possibly be anything yeah. under there. Exactly. <laughs> or sticking them in your plants. You know, they know. They know all the hiding spots. So you kind of want to think in a mind of a burglar, you know, where would I look for my key mm -hmm. if it was hidden? So we don't want to do that. Right, uh, right. If you're going to have somebody come check your house, give them the key and tell them to hold on to it, ensuring that they lock up uh, after they leave and all. Mm -hmm. um, so again, you, you want to leave your blinds closed uh, up, not down, because up is more difficult to see inside your house, right. uh, making sure everything's locked up, your garage doors. So when you go on vacation... Uh, it's very easy to manipulate a garage door. Um, so what we want to do, we want to make it difficult. Uh, we maybe want to uh, disconnect, you know, the uh, the um, electric garage door opener and maybe put a padlock around the runner so that if they're trying to manipulate the door, that'll keep them from opening the door. And also, and then, of course, that's another thing you want to let, you know, our, our department know, hey, look, you know, uh, our garage door is locked with a padlock. The electronic uh, garage door opener is disconnected, so they can't get in. You want to tell whoever's checking your house, don't go through the garage. Leave it alone. Go the other way. Mm -hmm. And then make sure that everything is, is double locked, the, the door to your garage that leads to your house. Make sure you use a deadbolt in the back. So hopefully you have deadbolts in all your exterior doors. Yeah. So we want to have those deadbolts. And if you have a glass door, make sure you've got the keyed on both sides because otherwise somebody can just mm. punch the single pane or oh double gosh, pane I and know. reach in and twist it. But mm -hmm. if you've got a keyed one on both sides mm -hmm. and the key's not in the deadbolt, it's yes. still going to be locked. But unfortunately, the two-sided the, the, the two deadbolt is against the fire safety code. Oh, mm. good to know. Yeah. So, okay. so right. that's something else to consider. Okay, AJ, get, ri get rid of your two <laughs> keys. <laughs> Forget everything I just said. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking to the fire department next week or the week after that. Right, and, yes. Uh, hopefully they don't watch this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. well, that's okay. They can clear that up for us. Yes. Um, what about, there's a lot of phone scams, internet scams yes. around this time of year too. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, uh, a lot of times they try and tug at your heartstrings, you know, please help this family. You may even have people come up to your front door and tell you, you know, my child, they don't have any gifts for Christmas. Can you please help? And this and that. And a lot of times... There may be somebody that's legitimate, you know, but you just don't know. Right. So that's why, you know, you kind of want to direct them to the legitimate organizations that can assist them uh, because you don't know if you're being set up, you know, whether it's in person or by phone. Uh, you know, if you're not familiar with the organization, say, I'm sorry, I can't help and hang up. Uh, if they start getting mad at you and, you know, start talking to you pretty ugly, that's a telltale sign that they are not legit. So mm -hmm. we just want to hang it up. Um, again, start asking for gift cards, gift cards. Yes. I've, I mean, I haven't fallen for it, but I have had, you know, emails and text messages. Hey, I need you to get this gift card for me. I'm so-and-so, which it's someone I know. And then they're like, but I can't talk on the phone right now. And I'm like, okay, scam. Oh, did you call them? I, well, I did it go straight to voicemail. And it's like a, this call can't be, you know, but the person you knew, did you call them? Oh the, yes. The person I knew, I said, Hey, why do you need a gift card? And they were like, I don't need a gift card. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so again, you want to be smarter that, than that person. Uh, you know, if it just looks odd, it's like, mm, why do you want a gift card? Why do you want me to go to Western Union? That's just not the norm. Mm -hmm. You know, so we want to be smarter than that, uh, than what they're trying to pull and, you know, pull the wool over your eyes. Or again, tug at your heartstrings. They may call, especially uh, senior citizens, they'll call, Grandma, you know, this is your grandson, you know, I'm in jail or I'm stuck. Um I think, uh, who was it? My uh, my son's uh, step-grandma got a call that he was stuck in Houston. Oh, my goodness. And he wasn't. He was in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, he was with me at that time during COVID. My, he was with me. My grandpa got one of those. And, you know, he legitimately thought it was one of us kids that had been in a car wreck. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I guess it sounded like someone crying. Hard to tell mm -hmm. if it was really one of us or not. So he called my mom and was like, hey, is AJ all right? Is he in a car wreck? And she's like, no, I'm with him right now. So yeah, I mean, if you get one of those calls, try and call and figure out, you know, mm -hmm. don't dismiss it because accidents and tragedy does happen. But yes. but also a lot of times, I mean, 
grandparents and grandkids, they always have a little word for each other, you know, like, mm. you know, grandmas may be known as Mima or Tita or Granny or, you know, all these little nicknames. Mm -hmm. And then the grandparents may, you know, call their grandchildren by a little sweet nickname. That's right. So, you know, that's a way to, to test them. Okay, what do I call you? You know, yeah. what's your middle name? Mm -hmm. You know, well, they may know the middle name. But, you know, you want to you want to ask them something personal that only you and family members would know yeah. and all and just question them. And again, they're probably going to start getting mad at you, you know, and start saying very unpleasant things to you. So that right there is a big red flag. This is not legit. I'm going to hang up. Yeah. So, yeah. Red flags, things like even in like emails and texts, like misspellings um, with my gift card, it was I need you to complete an urgent task. No one talks like that. <laughs> I'm going to start. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Every email to Sierra will now be started with. I need the, you to complete. The need to complete an urgent task. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hello, Sierra. Yes. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, I mean, we can go on and on. Sophie, anything else before we wrap this up that you think should be talked about? The Waco Police Department is currently looking for those to join our dispatch team as 911 call takers. Being a dispatch operator means being the first to answer the call for help. As a dispatcher, your job is to answer emergency and non-emergency calls for police, fire, and emergency medical assistance. When you work as a dispatcher for Waco PD, you're helping not only your Waco community, but the entire county. To apply, you can visit the City of Waco website. We can't wait for you to be a part of the Waco PD team. Goodness. Um, golly, there, there's still so much. Again, you know, traveling, pay attention, let somebody know. Uh, especially college students. If you're leaving, going back home, make sure you secure your apartment, your house, your dorm room, uh, you know, lock up anything that's of value. Uh, make sure that you're recording all those serial numbers, uh, taking pictures of jewelry and stuff like that. But college students, if you're going to go back home for the holidays, make sure your car is in good working order, that you have plenty of charging cords, uh, your phone is charged up, you know, call, call home and say, hey, I'm fixing to leave right now. And then every time you make a stop, call to check in, but also to be very wary of where you stop for, you know, to rest up, to restroom or gas or whatever, you're hungry, uh, you know, go to a populated area. Don't go to these little gas stations in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Go to somewhere that, that there's people around and all. And if there's something shady, somebody uh, goes up to you, or is coming towards you and you just don't have a good feeling about it, go. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're stopping for a bathroom break and you just don't feel good about it, go. You know, uh, listen to your instincts. Listen to that sixth sense. Your body has a built-in 911 system, and it will tell you that something is not right. You may not know what it is, but just, just leave the area and just go. But constantly check with your loved ones where you're at, how far you are. Make sure you have plenty of gas. Don't take that chance like, Ah, uh, I got a quarter of a tank. I'll stop at the next town. Well, how far is the next town? Mm -hmm. uh, in a case you break down, you know, make sure uh, you have blankets and stuff. And uh, please do not get in the car with somebody that is wants to help you and take you to the next gas station. Just don't get on the phone, call the police and say, hey, I'm here, mile marker, whatever. So you want to pay attention what mile marker you're in or what exit you know, you just mm -hmm. passed or exit that you're approaching, what city you're in. We want to pay attention to those things. So when you do call police, you can give them as exact a location as possible. Yeah. Yeah. But don't trust anybody. Just stay there. Stay locked up in your car. Stay on the phone with police until they get there. Right. And, and we don't want to scare you. There are good people in the world. Yes. But the only number one person you can don't trust me. yourself or the number one person you can trust is yourself. Yes. There we go. You know. I got it out. So... And and if you don't know the local police department or don't want to call 911, like if you have a Texas driver's license, on the back of it is roadside assistance for Texas drivers. Oh, hey, there you go. Um, so yeah, there's if you're help in Texas, everywhere. there's people that will help you and get you taken care of. Yeah, well, perfect. I mean, we can go on and on. But Sophie, thank you so much Damn. for joining us again on Waco PD on the Beat. I'm Sierra Shipley, the public information officer. And I'm Officer AJ Smith, the Crime Stoppers coordinator for McLennan County. See you next time, Waco. Waco PD on the beat. The heartbeat serving 